our lab first and foremost. Like, if you haven't been here and seen it in person, you're not gonna believe it. <laughs> and this is actually, that lab is actually what made me stay, I mean, come to this company. When I saw that lab just taking a tour right. from the glass, right. I was so blown away. I couldn't believe there was that many towers and switches in there. Hi, welcome back to Illuminations, the podcast from Approved Networks, a brand of Legrand. I'm Katie Miale, Marketing Director for Approved Networks, and I'm here today with our lab manager, and I'm going to go ahead and let you introduce yourself. Thank you, Katie. I'm Oliver. I've been here. Um, <laughs> I've been with Approved Networks for seven years. Uh, the, well, starting this year will be seven years. Uh, started Started in, around the same time I did. Yeah. Yeah, just before me. That's very true, yeah. Yes. And then I did start in the warehouse. Yeah. And slowly moved up into the lab and then became the lab manager years into it. Uh, just very fascinated with this industry, this company at the time. Yeah. And even the accusation has been pretty entertaining so far. <laughs> entertaining. Yeah. That's one word for it. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you were kind of discovered by our VP of engineering, yeah, uh, uh, Brian Patton, and he poached you out of the warehouse into the lab, right? He did, yeah. Right, yeah, so you've had a great mentor. Like, he's one of the pioneers of this industry, so that's yes. really cool. Yeah. And he's not shy about sharing his information with any of yeah. his employees, which is amazing in a leader, right? You yeah. want your leader to be able to show you and not hold back information. Sound very... Very yeah, no, he's that. he's great. He he knows his stuff, and you're right. He yeah. does. He shares. It. He's he's mentored so many people. Like so many of his lab engineers or wor people working in engineering actually started through the warehouse. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a great opportunity we've had here, yeah. even before even before Legrand. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Which has also been great for us. I talked to Mika a little bit about the Legrand um, merger in the last episode, so we can check that out too. Yeah. Yeah. So you're the lab manager now. Yes. Um, so I understand that in the past year we've made a pretty significant, or maybe the past couple of years, but the last year we've made a significant investment into equipment in the lab to keep us, as Brian says, bring Brian up again on the bleeding edge, right? So, yes. Uh, beyond the cutting edge, Brian doesn't settle for. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. And then in this industry, it's ever changing, right? There's always something new, so we have to be. Right. There, we have to have the latest equipment, or else we get left behind. Mm -hmm. And who's going to want to buy from a company that isn't up to? Right. Yeah. Uh, so we're here to keep our customers where they need to be. Exactly. For sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, what kind of investments have we made in the in, you know the recent past? So it seems like, and the, well, it seems that we've been purchasing a lot of. Well, we just want to be on top of all the testing and qualifications, obviously. So uh, Legrand's been really good about investing in new equipment, new testing gear. You know, um, new, like when I talk about equipment, I'm talking about switches, right? Right. And uh, you know, the the what was the latest back in the day has become the latest, the the past now, and this is the newest switch of this vendor, you know, or this company. And so we have to have those on top of. Uh, all the software as well. We, you know, the software is always updating. Um, so they've done pretty well at investing in this equipment on top of investing in the employees. Right. You know, yeah. Like they are investing in employees, showing us that they do care and uh, let's get the right people in the right places. Yep. So we have everything comes out. We have uh, the right product at the end of the day, right? The right. product comes out right. Right. So, so basically, we what we say in marketing is that we're actually testing and coding in the same equipment yeah. that the or for the same equipment and testing in the same coding for the same equipment and testing in the same equipment that our customer is going to have. Yeah. And um, I feel like one of the, the things that you guys do really well is that uh, in our sales team and engineering and sales engineering, it's like a solution based um, approach where we can actually tell our customers what they need based on what the, their scenario is. So for us, we have to stay kind of ahead of the game so yeah. we can get the, our customer to the next level. Yes. Um, and I, I think it's great because you guys, um, like I said, along with sales, provide a lot of education for our customers. Yeah, it is really cool. It's, um, it's also 
What's really cool too is um, work, going back to sales and engineering, working together when we have that, uh, you know, we try to work with our sales team. Obviously, we're not, we're not trying to fight them. Um, <laughs> so, but the closer relationship we have, the more we can replicate what that customer is trying to create on their end or trying to solve on their end. So what is it about Approved Networks Lab that actually sets us apart from other third-party providers of optics? Our lab, first and foremost, like if you haven't been here and seen it in person, you're not going to believe it. <laughs> and this is actually, that lab is actually what made me stay, I mean, come to this company. When I saw that lab just taking a tour right. from the glass, right. I was so blown away. I couldn't believe there was that many towers and switches in there. Right. That's why working in it was amazing, and now right. being in charge of it is like right. mind-blowing. Like I am so honored by it. But our lab has so much equipment in it, right? It has over 100 switches in there. So whatever the customer is asking for, we can we have it there. Right. And we have some variation of it. Going beyond the switches, the, te the coding capabilities that we have here and how we code things is also just I, in my eyes, it's just light years away from what everybody else is doing because our engineers in there aren't just robots, they're thinking. And, and our parts, we put a lot of thought into it. If, if it doesn't work, there's no, hey, it didn't work, take it over to, bring it over to me and then, you know, or bring it even higher to the VP of engineering and figure out the solution. These guys are going to figure it out. What, where did the code go wrong? Let's do this. Let's. Let's add these bytes to it. Or maybe it's the way we're looping it. Let's loop it different. Let's connect it to this. That's what makes this lab so much more impressive than all our competition, uh, instead of just plugging and playing. Nice. Because anybody can just plug and play. But our lab is thinking all the time. Gotcha. Yeah, mm -hmm. in a previous video that we did with Brian, the RVP of engineering, um, he actually said that he empowers you guys to do what you need to do, right? To get yeah. the, to get the job done, right? And he I, he even said like you can't break anything. Like just try what you need to try to get things done, and it gives you guys the op uh, the opportunity to go way above and beyond that way, right? You exactly. kind of push the parameters of what's possible. No, exactly. Yeah. Um, and that's that's the beauty of it, right? Um, just for an example, uh, when one of our sales guys' customer had an issue, we were uh, we coded it in a million different ways. Didn't work. It still, the customer still had the same end. Then we got on the call with the customer. Okay, that's what you're seeing. We weren't seeing that here. Now let me try to get that to happen here. Let me mess around with some of these bytes. Let me mess around with the switch. We were able to replicate the same issue the customer had in our lab and figure out what caused it. And that, that's how we were able to, and we were able to save that account, you know, but we were uh, just the, the fact that we were able to think and not just rely on, on an auto coder helped right. us out a lot. Okay. You know. How's the 400 gig ZR Plus different than any other 400 gig uh, optic? The distance okay. alone, the distance the that distance. it goes mm -hmm. is way further, and which is causing a lot of heating issues, right? That's... Um, I mean, with any optics, that's just the biggest problem is heat. Uh, I don't know if you've seen some of the 800 gig stuff, but it's uh, a different form factor. They got the OSFPs. Uh, a lot of them have like that heat sink on top, um, but the heating is always, and with more data and with our parts being smaller and smaller, parts are going to get hotter. So there's always that solution of how do we get, how do we prevent this from overheating? So one of the unique things about third party is that we can actually connect different different OEMs, right? So yeah. if you're buying from one OEM, you have a switch from one OEM, a switch from another OEM, you're not going to be able to buy optics for the opposite OEM, right? Yeah. So that's where, where we come in, and that's one of the things that we excel at. So how do you ensure that all of that works? Uh, the simple answer to that is just vigorous testing, right? But because of our lab and the hundreds of switches, well, the over hundreds of switches we have in there, uh, we are able to test it and make sure that the coding that we do have on there is functioning correctly on there. But we are, we're looking for it. It's not just like, you can plug it in. So explain to me like what testing is, right? Yeah. So, okay, you plug it in and then what happens? Like, yeah. You plug it in, you walk away, like what happens? So that's the thing, yeah, we, we wanna plug it in and we want to leave it and loop it. We have a loop, we, we call loopbacks, right? Uh -huh. Or at times we will loop them to parts 
that are going to play nice with it, right? We have a sample set of 25 gigs in the lab that we always use for testing. Like, hey, if the customer is going to do, is going to do this, we want to make sure it works the same exact way. Right. And if they're breaking it out to any NIT cards, we're going to connect it to NIT cards to make sure that it functions the way it's supposed to. So this is like, we are really testing this, the same way the customer would be using it out in the field, right? Right. And that's what we want to replicate. And we're looking at the information as well uh, when we test it. It's not just plugging, seeing the light go green, cool, send it out. No, it's right. doing that, making sure traffic is flowing. Let's look at all the commands and let's look at all the readings and make sure that the readings are accurate and passable. And if there's anything that's wrong, first we make sure that it's not on our end. And if, you know, is the coding correct? Is, is the distance that we're testing correct? Because that's another thing too, when we have parts that go the distance, such as ERs, EXs, or ER4s, we're testing at 40 kilometers with the big spool box we have in the, in the lab that has 40 kilometers of spool in there so we can make sure it's gonna go that distance. And we're not just promising, we're not making empty promises to the customer. We're like, we know that this is gonna go 40 kilometers. And that's how we're making sure it's tested the way it's supposed to be used. Okay, yeah. So let's <laughs> take it back um, even before you get to to um, testing. What's so incredible? Like, what's so unique, or uh, what makes our coding the best in the business? So our coding, it makes it the best because we're always keeping up to date, right? What a code that would have worked um, five years ago with an update from that certain vendor, <laughs> we'll just say like a Cisco, is not gonna, it, it might be outdated and all of a sudden there's bytes on there that don't work and there's new bytes that need to be on there. And on our end, we're figuring this out. We're making it work the way it's supposed to work in the latest software. All our switches are always kept up to date, right? Because if you're not, then you're not coding to the customer's needs, especially if the customer's constantly updating their switches. So our coding, because of that, it makes some of our coding the best. We're always investing in our coding equipment too. And it also comes from investing in our R&D department as well. You know, it starts a lot of our coding starts in our R&D here at Approved. And so what, is, what does the R&D department consist of? The R&D department, that's the cutting edge department is what I like to call it, call it because they are on the latest and greatest. So nothing comes into our lab until it goes through R&D first. So R&D is the start of everything. If you, for the latest and greatest, they gotta be, they gotta know everything that's coming, what changes are happening, and then from there, the lab will replicate. Well, they will sh kind of explain to the lab, this is what's gonna come down eventually. Uh, and they also, our, our R&D department qualifies all our parts, and it qualifies a lot of our codes too. Yeah, we are always investing in our in our coding equipment and our employees. We want them to know all the changes and all the coding that needs to happen in certain parts and certain things. Uh, you know, they they we want them to be up to date on everything too. So all our equipment is up to date. Our employees up to date. Well, as far as the coding is up to date the employees up to date as well. So the equipment's up to date, the coding's up to date, which is the most important thing, yeah. but the employees know how to implement it. Exactly. Got it. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. So I know you, you've mentioned that you do stay up to date on the latest industry standards and the techn technology advancements, um, but actually, how do you actually do that? Is it, do you attend trade shows? Do you, you know, are you on the internet researching all the time? Where does that information actually come from? Uh, we stay up to the latest and greatest with the industry standards uh, by, I mean, trade shows is one of the great starts. Like we go into trade shows, you're gonna see stuff that's gonna come down the pipeline, not even in a year or two, but like in five years, and you're like, whoa, okay, that's what we're working towards. Nice to know. So then, us here at Approved are now kind of figuring out the solution and working towards that goal. Like, this is what's going to come down in the pipeline. 1.2 terabit parts are coming. Like, that's the future, you know. Um, so by going to trade shows, that's one of the less, that's one of the ways. Uh, and then the rest, 
I can't really speak too much on gotcha. as much as I would love to. <laughs> all right, all right. No, that's, that's good. Yeah. yeah. Like, I'm like wondering why I never knew some of this stuff, but um, clearly there are certain top secret things, so that makes sense. Um, and how do you handle any potential compatibility issues that may be raised when using um, third party with legacy networking equipment? So, um, not all of our customers actually have like the latest switches. So very true. what's our role in, you know, kind of working with customers where they are at any level in, you know, as far as where their, where their network is right now in terms of technology? Yeah, um, and really quick, not every customer needs the latest and greatest. Like, let's be real, you right, know? <laughs> right, yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, but that's, just to throw it back on the lab, that's the beauty of the lab that we have here is some of that equipment we have in there some of the switches we have in there is legacy stuff and it's legacy stuff that um, is probably up to like the latest version of that time of the last time that company updated it uh, and the, it's funny you bring that up because the coding on those is vastly different from the coding on the latest oh interesting yeah so then okay there are at least on our end at approved there are times where there's certain names for these parts like we will have a actually the vendor itself is pretty good about renaming the part even if it's like an, an you know the same part but this one only works for this older switch uh -huh. so there are different part names for older switches and there's newer part names for newer switches but for the most part because we have that equipment we're able to test it and make sure that it does work in there you know, um, but at the end of the day too, that also, in the lab, we don't see much of what, we just get an order. Right, right, order no, I says, know exactly like, where yeah, you're going. You're just, like, I don't really know what the customers are necessarily yeah. doing, but you do see that you get orders for stuff that's kind of, you know, you're still, we're still selling, do you get a lot of one gig anymore? All the time. All the time. Yeah. So we're still selling a lot of one yeah. and 10 gig and different industries are still on those. A lot of times it's going to be education. Yeah. Uh, government. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We it's still a, get you know, G-Pons. Depending on what G-Pons is. G-Pons and like yeah. that's it. Uh, every now and then I'll see a Zen pack and I'm like, oh, wow, funny. like this is I didn't even awesome. know there were, there used to be one in this <laughs> room, right? It might, there might be one in there in Maybe. that cabinet. <laughs> yeah. No, that's funny. So, um, Interesting, because you would you would say um, when you get into like high speed financial trading or something like that, then you get into like the faster. Yeah. But you see, in the lab, you get a piece of paper with an order on it, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So a lot of this is more account management and marketing stuff. It is, yeah. Yeah. But either way, it goes back to what I was saying. Some parts are older, have different names, and we know legacy part. Like, yeah. You gotta, you gotta use that legacy code. Uh, so that's very helpful. So, you know, the 400 gig ZR came out this year. The company made some investments into new coding and testing equipment, particularly in testing and in research and development, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, Mika and I discussed, like, what were some of the, the benefits or advantages or some, you know, benefits, I guess, that we've experienced since being acquired by Legrand. And I would say that's probably a big one is the investment into research and development and, like you said, people. Yeah. Right? Yeah, people, the people, equipment, yeah. yeah they're, yeah. Really, uh, they're really living up to what they promised, so that's why, you know, it's, it's been, like I said, very entertaining. So, yeah, that's all awesome stuff. Um, let's talk about what's next to the extent that you can. Like, I, we can't give away the secret sauce, I get that. Yeah. But as an industry, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's, there aren't a lot of secrets, right? So we know 1.6 terabytes coming. What's coming next for approved, at least, is... 800. 800 you know, gig? Yes. We this have first quarter, I heard? The, yes. Yeah. Uh, and we have heard, we have seen uh, uh, an increase, at least in our R&D department for 800 gig. So like how approved has always been, we're always trying to be prepared for everything. Uh, and we've invested into equipment and gear for the testing and functionality of these parts. And I heard that's here, right? So it is we here. have parts we're working on and the equipment's been here since the last quarter of last year. Yes. And uh, I would say even sooner than that we had Even it. sooner yeah. than that. All right, so yeah. you give a little away a little yeah. <laughs> So 800 gig is any day now, practically, right? Yeah. Yeah, and then um, 
1.6 coming. 1.6 is that. kind of, mm -hmm. you know, and that's just me speaking off of what we were able to see at OFC, you know. Right. Uh, OFC, like I said, you'll see some very impressive stuff. And when I saw the 1.6, I was very blown away. Uh, but first comes the 800. So let's see what, what we can do with the 800, what the customers do with the 800. So explain the benefits of uh, working with third party when it comes to um, whether it's direct attached cables and um, multi-vendor or um, breakouts. Uh, that's the beauty of coming to third party, right? We're not committed to just one OEM. We can work with all of them and we're just as committed to all of them too. <laughs> but, so how does that work? Like you could, uh, someone in their network could have a switch from one vendor and they need to con connect to a switch from another vendor? Yes, so if you have, like as you said, one vendor and you have, you just have two different switches, uh, we can code these direct attached cables or active, they can be both, it doesn't have to be one. Uh, so there's the direct other. attached copper cables and yeah. then there's active optical cables, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Uh, we can code them to play nice with each other I and mean, talk to one another. Whereas in your OEM, well, they're just committed to right. their switch. They're not going to sell you cables that will enable you to connect to a, a different switch. Exactly, different, yeah. A different vendor switch. Well, thanks so much for being here. Like, seriously, I know it's oh, not part you. of your job. It's not what you do. You don't talk for a living. We have plenty of people around here who do talk for a living. <laughs> and uh, so we really appreciate you being here and talking about the lab. And uh, we really appreciate everything you guys do in there. You do a great job, and oh, we know you. it. And yeah. yeah on and behalf of just... the lab, thank you so much. We really appreciate that. Oh, that sure. means a lot. Yeah, of course. Yeah, no, it's not just your fearless leader. He, couldn't, <laughs> he could not do it without his people. Right? Yeah, no. But, right? yeah. Very cool. Later, skaters. <laughs>